Okay, stop talking. All right, so this table says, which table represents the equation y equals 2 tenths times x? 2 tenths times x. Now, let me ask a question of you. Because we're going to use a little bit of Thomas Paine here. Is 2 tenths less than or greater than 1? Less than 1. 2 tenths is less than 1. That's like 20 cents is less than a dollar. So 2 tenths is less than 1. Therefore, is my x going to get bigger or smaller when I multiply it by 2 tenths? If I multiply it by something greater than 1, it gets bigger. If I multiply it by 1, it stays the same. If I multiply it by something less than 1, then you're, it's going to make the answer smaller. So I want my y to be smaller than my corresponding x. Because I'm multiplying my x by something less than 1. So on the answer choice A, could that be an answer? No? Why not? Good, because 2 times 2 tenths is going to be less than 2. 2 times 2 tenths has to be less than 2. Let's look at answer choice B. If I multiply 2 times 2 tenths, does it get smaller? Is y smaller than 2? Yes. yes. What about C? Yes. Okay. What about D? Nope. So we've eliminated two answers. And remember, all we have to do is make sure... Hold that. There's one number behind the decimal point. Okay. So obviously, if I'm using a little bit of Thomas Paine... We're going to be able to figure this out because there's two left, and I know two times two tenths equals four tenths. How do you know without doing the multiplication? Well, because it's four tenths on both of them. So two times two tenths on B, it says four tenths, and C, it says four tenths. Since I've eliminated the other answers, then obviously four tenths has to be true. On C, it says four times two tenths equals eight tenths. On B, it says three times two tenths equals eight tenths. Well, three times two tenths and four times two tenths cannot have the same answer. So which answer choice would be then correct? C. C. Started off, we eliminated two. And if you have a problem with four answer choices, usually you can eliminate two without having to do any thinking whatsoever or very little thinking. All right, so let's look. The pattern in the graph represents the relationship between the input, J, which is along the x-axis, and the output, K. So which rule describes the pattern in the graph? All right, you look on your own thing since it disappeared on the screen. All right, so my ordered pair, one, what? Four. One, four. My next ordered pair is two, three, and four. So how are we getting to the y from each x? Or from the j to each k? Adding what? One. Three. Oh. Adding three. Because if my j is one, then my, and my k is three, then j would equal k plus three. You have, there's two answers that are adding three. You have to figure out what are you adding three to. You're adding three to the J. And you could look at it 
on, if we take our first K is four, if I add three to four, I'm not gonna get my J number. So answer choice D makes zero sense because if you add three to the J, are you gonna get the K? And so answer choice D makes zero sense because if I add three to the K, I'm not gonna get what the J equals. So you have two different ways to do it, just like B and C are both multiplicative and you look at it, am I multiplying three times the K to get the J or am I multiplying three times the J to get the K? So once you figure out if it's additive or multiplicative, then you figure out what are you adding to? Are you adding to the number in the x-axis or the y-axis? And that would make it much easier here. The following students were asked to determine if the table below represents a multiplicative pattern, read their discussion below, and then decide if you agree or disagree with each student. Justify your answer, which means tell me why your answer is true. Well, here we have our X. So let's look at our ordered pairs. Our ordered pairs would be 2, 8, 3, 12, 4, 16, and 5, 20. So London, do you think we are having a multiplicative pattern or an additive pattern? Multiplicative. So what would be multiplied by the by 2 to get 8? 2 times what equals 8? 16. No, 2 times something equals 8. 4. four. Does 3 times 4 equal 12? Yes. yes. Does 4 times 4 equal 16? Yes. Does 5 times 4 equal 20? Yes. Okay, so we've just determined this is a multiplicative pattern. Let's look at what Gary says. I think it's additive because bam, we've already decided it's multiplicative. Let's look at Lucy. I think it's multiplicative because you multiply each number in the X row by four to determine the matching Y. Does that sound legitimate? Yes. yes. Let's look at Aaron. I think it's a multiplicative because the ordered pair zero, zero fits the pattern. Does the ordered pair zero, zero fit the pattern? Is zero times two, zero? No, I mean, yes. It is. So zero, zero, zero is a multiplicative one. Anything you multiply by zero is gonna equal zero. You will never have an additive pattern with, with zero, with zero, zero. You'll never have an ordered pair with an additive pattern, zero, zero. Because if it's additive, you're gonna add something, which means it would have to become bigger, unless you're adding a negative number, which we're not going into negative numbers yet this year. So it can't be Aaron. And Craig thinks it's an additive, ah, not additive. Not additive. So who was correct? I forget. Lucy was correct. All right, so I want you to do this slide. Yeah, just that slide on your own. Circle the answer on there or write it off to the side. And then you can start on today's posts.